Ah, solo. Um, because I can, I can go everywhere when I want. I don't really go and talk to people by myself, but when I'm traveling solo, uh, that's probably the only choice I, I'm left with. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good, but I really also enjoy my time alone. When you are solo travel, you, you just think you, ju you are just with yourself all the time, so you think about your life, about your choices, about everything. It was year 2019 when I decided to take part in one of the most glorious adventure in my life. I decided to travel Vietnam and I picked Hanoi as my first destination. Today I am in Hanoi and this is my first time traveling solo outside Thailand. Vietnam is a very beautiful country and I cannot wait to explore. I left the airport, I took a bus towards the city, I didn't book any hostel in advance didn't know where to stay, so that was for me to figure out at that time. I got off the bus to a totally unknown place, busy streets packed with thousands of people and vehicles, especially motorbikes. So this is what Hanoi looks like. People were playing games I've never seen before. People were dancing and there were so much happening in the city beautiful temples, pagodas, and historical sites. Surprisingly, I got to explore a lot of Hanoi on my first day. After a super tiring day and exciting times of exploring around Hanoi city, I stopped by a local restaurant for a traditional Vietnamese snack called bun. It was my first time trying it out and honestly, I kinda liked it. However, my love for bun definitely grew in me by the end of my Vietnam trip. I went around more temples, got to meet the locals, and got to know more of the tradition and the people in Hanoi. Today I'm here with Nancy. I met her in the hostel yesterday and we decided to explore a little more of the city together. a little upgrade here, um, traditional Vietnamese hat. We tried out some delicious local street food. Well, too much talking already. Let me show you a little montage of what my Hanoi experience looked like.
now comes the glorious part. After Hanoi, I decided to go on a day trip to Ha Long Bay. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Vietnam. The beauty of this place blew me away. Finally here on the boat, bamboo boat, in Ha Long Bay, looking all touristy. The day after my Ha Long Bay visit, I decided to take part in a more daring adventure. Well, at least something that would put me out of my comfort zone even more, something more challenging. This time, I decided to go up to the northernmost part of Vietnam. Getting the bus for Cao Bang right now. That one? It's almost 10 in the morning and I'm leaving for Cao Bang today. Um, should take me around 6 hours to get to Cao Bang. So far, no foreigner at all. Um, it's all the local people, people, the stuff here, the grab taxi that I took, none of them can speak in English. So um, it's really challenging in a country where not a lot of people speak in English. That is the current sunset situation for today. Basically spent the whole day on the bus, um, about seven hours from Hanoi to Shabang, Kabang. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That is my motorbike right there. And there is Benedict, we're, we're teaming up, feeling pretty good. So at the hostel in Kabang, I met Benedict and Patrick. We teamed up for a motorbike ride all the way up to Vietnam to China water. A three hours ride from Kabang City. Our next destination is Ban Goik Waterfall. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Finally made it all the way to the waterfall. Check this out. Oh my god. It is way better than what I used to see on Instagram and anywhere else on the internet. You come here, see it in person. The view is priceless. This was a magical moment. I never saw a waterfall this beautiful in my life. It was very special and a totally different feeling, full with joy. It just got back from the waterfall, which happens to be um, the fourth largest cross-border waterfall in the whole world. And it was fascinating. It was really, really gorgeous. Now we are here in uh, Stone Village. So the houses here are built from stones, which is quite dazzling. I'm, I'm blown away how awesome this place is. Oh, yeah, there's, there are people inside the house. They're having lunch, probably. Today you sleep right? Today uh, in Kabang. Kabang? Yeah. Oh, Kabang. Well, that's, me that's and Benedict, tea. we got to try out yeah, some local cool. tea made right out of raw, boiled tea leaves and Cheers. some food I've never there tried before. Even with some food, I don't know what it is. She's just going for it. Do you know what it is? Absolutely not. All right. How is it? Yeah, it's good. Is mm. it? Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Come on. Later on that day, we visited a huge cave, the name of which I never remember. It is sparkling, no way, it's so beautiful. Right. We tried to keep pushing the limit by exploring more of Kabang's nature. As usual, 
I flew my drone around to see a different perspective of the location I'm traveling while creating some amazing contents at the same time. We just pulled over here in some random place where they're like um, taking care of the buffaloes. They're feeding the buffaloes here. That smile on Benedict and the locals' face after they met us was priceless. They greet us with warm welcome. <laughs> Alright, pretty hectic for you, yeah? That was awesome! <laughs> And then this happened. My motorbike crashed. Let's not talk into details why this happened. No? Well, I was driving one-handed and getting some bangers for my Instagram story. It all happened in blink of a second. How are you guy? How are you guy? Well, if you love yourself, never be on the phone while you're driving. I've learned my lessons in a hard way. Since I was far away from home and not knowing what this incident will turn into, I got pretty scared and nervous. Luckily, Benedict got the whole thing captured on her GoPro. Then with the help of locals, I got to fix my bike later on that night. <laughs> not too bad. Could have been worse. The camera drifted for like five meters and then you saw me like Yeah on, on action. Yeah, on action. Uh, could have been worse, really. Oh my god. Another great part about solo travel is meeting new people. Many highs and goodbyes on the road. It was my last day in Hanoi. Me, Benedict and Patrick. We got to meet up again and this time in Hanoi. We went out for the egg coffee. Not just anywhere in Hanoi. We went to the original cafe where the egg coffee was invented. This guy himself served us the cup of coffee he invented during World War II. Alright, just arrived at this famous railway track um, in Hanoi. That's really beautiful here. Yeah. yeah? Hey, there you go. Finally made it to the railway track. Um, we're gonna be here for a while. Let's see if the train's gonna arrive. Could be anytime soon. We were late for the train that day. So, before you visit the railway, make sure to check out the schedule beforehand. And the Ban legacy continues. It's like Krapao Gai of Vietnam. The trip is nearly coming to an end. Spending the last hour here in Hanoi. I'm gonna be leaving for Ho Chi Minh City in like about an hour. I'll head to the airport and I'll reach Ho Chi Minh City by tonight. And probably either tonight or tomorrow morning, I'm gonna take a bus to Muine. Thanks for the good times, guys. Yeah, that was good. Good too, bro. I just arrived at Nan Bai Airport and I'm on my way to Ho Chi Minh City right now. So on my way back here, I was thinking about the past few days, all the places that I've been to and all the adventures. It just gives you this sense of um, accomplishment and really boost up your ego. And I really, really feel confident right now knowing that I can accomplish my goal in a given amount of time and it feels amazing. 175 for the hostel. Just 
like most people, I saved the best for the last. And this time, I visited one of the most famous tourist spot called Muine. I'm here in Muine at a local fishing village and they have this very beautiful tiny little boat. It's a rounded boat and right now I'm going for a ride. It's a 50 minute ride and it should be Right now, nothing else matters. It's just you and you and you all alone. You're here and your best friend is your own instinct. Follow your own instinct and that's the best way to know your true self. Being in a place like this on your own, it just makes you feel vulnerable and you start to realize how valuable your life is. Even though sometimes we don't appreciate our life, we don't appreciate of what we have in our life, this kind of moment really makes you humble. There are so many people out there who are, who are not even fortunate to have drinking water. Um, but we're, we're living in a, in a country where we, we, we get what we need all the time, but still we keep complaining about things and not really appreciate of what we already have. So I really, really encourage you all out there who have never traveled solo, at least this can be your once in a lifetime experience to know who you really are and to appreciate your life even more. And that's what's all we need to become a better person and a better version of yourself. Tony from China. Uh, yes, from China. Yes. High five. Uh, Fine. Uh, you know, like yeah, my with my hand. With my hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's nice. it. That's what we do in Thailand, you know. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Yeah, high five. All right. <laughs> 